you. At ServiceNow Knowledge 14 is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're here live at Moscone South. Uh, this is day three of ServiceNow Knowledge. We've been here uh, all week interviewing customers, CIOs, pundits, uh, like Jeffrey Moore was on, fantastic, executives. Uh, and one of the areas that we've talked about extensively, uh, and we have for quite some time, and we've written about this, uh, both on Wikibon, SiliconANGLE, uh, John Furrier has an article on Forbes, about the ServiceNow market opportunity. When ServiceNow first came out uh, uh, for its public road show, everybody was focused on the help desk piece of it, a relatively small market, you know, billion, two billion dollar market. And then, ServiceNow started to educate people about the IT service management market, which is much bigger, it's you know, multi-billions, maybe it's four billion plus, uh, but we started to, at Wikibon, take a look at the TAM and notice that there were several opportunities, and, and one of those was actually managing infrastructure, operations management, other, other uh, you know, pieces of the, the, the IT life cycle. Of course, we've also talked extensively today about the uh, enterprise service management, which is any service-oriented component of the enterprise and process, which can be automated. Uh, but we want to drill in to that piece that's a little bit more concrete. I, I call it the, the IT lifecycle management. Uh, ServiceNow calls it IT operations management, ITOM. And Mike Nappy is here to talk about that. Uh, he's in the product group at ServiceNow. He's an expert uh, in this field. <clears throat> Mike, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Well, it's great to be here, Dave, thanks. So uh, how do you guys define uh, ITOM and, and how does it relate to sort of the core ITSM piece? Sure, uh, ITOM really kind of evolved out of our customers telling us, uh, hey, they've been putting more and more of their processes on ServiceNow, uh, automating those processes and getting great efficiency, as you know, with the ITSM side of the house. And so they've been asking us to uh, extend those processes more deeply into their own infrastructure, their, which is increasingly a cloud infrastructure, hybrid cloud type of infrastructure, and, um, and light up, if you will, uh, more of what's going on in their infrastructure so that they can make more informed decisions on the process side of the house and drive change, really kind of put the horse in front of the cart, have the process drive the infrastructure. So, Okay, so, so let's compare that to the, so the core, when we talk to ServiceNow customers, that does, well we started with problem management and, and change management. You're talking about going beyond that and, and, and actually um, managing the process of that change, right? That's right, yeah. So you know, we've had uh, technologies like discovery and uh, orchestration for quite some time at ServiceNow. Right. What we've been doing in recent releases is building on top of that as a platform and delivering solutions for cloud management, for configuration management, and uh, with our upcoming release for event management. And what's bringing all these things uh, together is uh, the need to understand our, our customers' services, how they're deployed, their relationships and their dependencies, so that when issues arise on those services, they can connect them to our incident management, for example, Incident management, in turn, can drive change. Change can connect to automation uh, that we have in orchestration and extend down into the customer's infrastructure and actually remediate the issue directly. So you get this kind of closed loop, fully automated uh, loop. Now, just to clarify, and I'm sure you get this a lot, you're not competing with Puppet and Chef, right? Just like you're not competing with Workday and HR. Right. <clears throat> Explain what you're doing, for example, with those tool sets and how they fit into ITOM. Sure, great, yeah. Puppet and Chef do a, a great job of managing data center configuration at scale. They have this model-based approach where they have a, a master server essentially that contains all of the golden images, if you will, for things like database servers, web servers, et cetera. So uh, it's a great solution, uh, very powerful. But what we've heard from our customers, a lot of the enterprise customers, are concerned that it's uh, so powerful that it, it tends to create some issues on its own. It's not governed by any sort of process. Um, what we do is we connect our change management, for example, to these tools and allow change to actually drive configuration execution in the data center. And so from our standpoint, Puppet and Chef represent kind of the last mile 
if you will, of change management. Right, okay, so now talk about the CMDB and how that fits in to the, to this, let's say, specific example uh, of the execution of uh, the, 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 ch the change um, and how you guys approach that. Sure. Yeah, so uh, the CMDB is, among other things, a repository of service and service relationships. And increasingly for our customers, it is the system of record. So of all the different sort of state models that exist in a typical enterprise, the ServiceNow CMDB represents uh, how customers want to drive their business. And so uh, based on that, we're extending that uh, system of record notion through uh, these orchestration capabilities that we have into tools like Puppet and Chef to remediate issues where uh, perhaps the desired configuration drifts and you get some sort of change in what's uh, expected and we can remediate that directly through orchestration into the data center and correct the drift. Okay, so, so, the, so the CMDB is the authority, if you will, or the, 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 the record of authority. That's now, right. So how does that get adjudicated? So let's say there's a dissonance between what happens and what's supposed to happen. So do you, do you write to the CD, CMDB first and say this is the way it's supposed to be? and then execute against that, or is it the other way around? You execute and then and, and yeah. then save that transaction to the CMDB. It's kind of a fuzzy question, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Sure, I'm sure, and in, in most enterprises, uh, that's exactly the issue, right? Is that changes happen on both sides of the equation right. without the other side knowing what's going on. And so what we're doing here is we're creating uh, capabilities that allow the CMDB to drive the configuration as opposed to understanding what changes happen to the configuration after the fact. This gives enterprises the ability to have greater control, an audit trail, and a better understanding of everything that's going on in the data center, such that when issues happen, it's easy to go back in time and understand what was the root cause of that issue. It's all about visibility, and with visibility you get control. Okay, so the policy gets written to the CMDB, and, and the CMDB then is the enforcing mechanism to ensure that the change occurs the way it was supposed to. That's right. Uh, which is perhaps different than many companies do it today. Wouldn't many companies make the change and then document it? Sure, and, in, yeah. in, uh, and we certainly support that model as well, right? Okay, uh, so you could do it that way, but, sure, but is sure. that the best practice? Well, we think the best practice should be that ServiceNow's processes, which our customers spend a lot of time in refining and automating, should be, in fact, driving what's happening in the configuration. As you know, most issues with services are configuration-related issues. Mm -hmm. uh, either intentionally or unintentionally, some configuration drift happens on a server, and it, it, it creates some sort of service-impacting issue. Um, if, if we could have better visibility into those changes, we can catch those changes before they impact the service. Yeah, well, you want a single point of, well, I'm going to say single point of control, even though I mean, I guess ServiceNow is not controlling, but, right. but you are certainly keeping track of everything and, and, and making sure that there can be a single point of control. Right. That it's other really than, about visibility. Yeah, right, it's, okay. Other than Fred the server guy right. saying, okay, right. I, I'm going right. to do this. Uh, okay, and so has this, how has this, talk about the examples and customers, how, how your extension into ITOM um, has proceeded, you know, what's the uptake like? You know, can you share with us any you know, real world examples? Yeah, well, we, we introduced uh, cloud provisioning, which is, allows us to provision uh, virtual machines in either Amazon or VMware environments through our service catalog with our Calgary release. And that was really yep. kind of our first uh, chip on the operations management table, if you will. Uh, and since then, we've expanded on that capability. We've added configuration management, which we just talked about, which connects to, uh, to Puppet and Chef and uh, other partner tools over time. And uh, coming up, we have event management. So what we're laying down here essentially is a foundation that enables us to understand service health in our customer's infrastructure, connect it to ServiceNow processes, have those processes drive remediation activities back into that infrastructure, and again, get that closed loop. Um, moving beyond that, being able to connect to our service catalog is the front door to IT, and have uh, DevOps, for example, request virtual machines and have those virtual machines be spooled up 
and not only the virtual machine, but have that machine be assigned a role like web server or um, database server and have it be provisioned automatically uh, through these technologies. Okay, so we talk about event management. Let's talk about that a little bit. So event, event could be anything, any kind of outage or a disaster would be, right. be, be an event. Um, so take us through uh, uh, an example of, of, let's say, you know, say a, some minor disaster, right? You get some outage or there's, I don't know, fire or whatever. There's some prolonged outage. No, it's not, a, it's not Katrina, but there's some prolonged outage that, that, that you can, you know, remediate, you know, instantaneously. Take us through an example of, of, of how a customer would utilize ServiceNow to, uh, to do that, and other tools, obviously. But, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, first and foremost, I, I want to uh, clarify that what we're not introducing is not a monitoring tool. Mm -hmm. Our customers, it's not a question of whether our customers are monitoring our, their infrastructure. Oftentimes, it's a case of they've got too many tools uh, yeah. monitoring the infrastructure. Right. This creates redundancy, uh, duplication, et cetera. What we've introduced essentially is a standardized way for customers to uh, promote events from those monitoring tools mm -hmm. into ServiceNow. And what ServiceNow does then is takes those events from all those different monitoring tools, it dedupes the ones, it correlates uh, the events to ServiceNow CMDB, to a CI, and by extension to the service that's impacted. And it allows you to define a set of rules that uh, submits those events into ServiceNow as incidents. And you can set the appropriate priority and so forth based on the impact. Okay, so service. maybe a better example would be some kind of human error. Right, that's sure. a very common event, uh -huh. right, as opposed to some big disaster. So that that would occur. Um, it, there might be several points of visibility throughout the organization to that event that might trigger several systems. They would flow into service now. You would dedupe those, identify that. Okay, this is all related to the to the same problem, and now let's go through a process to remediate. That's right. Okay. That's right. And you know, a, a good example is let's take, uh, for example, a disk failure on a server. Um, you might have a monitoring tool that's monitoring the hardware itself and saying, hey, the disk is failing. You may have another uh, outside-in type of monitoring tool that's looking at the service and seeing service performance going down. Mm. Both of those may come into ServiceNow as events, and you may say, oh, both of those, ServiceNow then says, both of those uh, events are related to the same issue on the same CI, and it impacts this service. That's a great example. Okay, which that, we, Jeff and I were talking earlier about your, one of your long-term opportunities we think is, is analytics as to what's going on in the system. Right. And so if you can start to develop, which you maybe have doing this already, you're probably doing it internally, but just predictive analytics as to these types of events that are going to occur, when they're going to occur, the likelihood, et cetera. Is that something that, is that, is that a, 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 a near to midterm opportunity, more long-term, and just in terms of specifically the predictive analytics? Yep. Uh, the answer is absolutely, and we're working with partners today like uh, Splunk and Sumo Logic mm -hmm. and others uh, that have strong capabilities in that area to connect to this event management solution we've created and add that predictive capability. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, that's where uh, th that's the only way that you scale. You need to separate the signal from the noise. You need to understand the things that really needed to be acted upon, and uh, those predictive analytics are, are key to doing that. All right, Mike, we got to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Absolutely. Great to see you again. Thank you, Dave. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back right after this word. This is theCUBE. We're live from Moscone. Right back.